Hello, welcome back. It's good to see you. Um, it's awesome, you hear me? Uh, I'm up to church. I'm the only one in this room, so I don't even need a mask, do I? So, uh, welcome back. It's good to it's good to be here again. Good to see you. Um, hope you're enjoying the listen to the lessons. I'm uh, I, I saw them last week's a little long. I try to make it a little shorter this week, but I can't make any guarantees. Uh, so let's start off with the prayer. Father God, thank you for this opportunity to come uh, together and study your word. Please open our hearts through your Holy Spirit so that we can receive the what you'd have us receive from the from the readings, from the scriptures, from the talk, uh, and from the talk that the, the hopefully the, the children will have with their parents, grandparents, bro older brothers, aunts, uncles. Please uh, guide our, our discussions, Lord. And please bless us and keep us all safe and well. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you all uh, again. And let's see. I as well, talk to you every week. Um, the, all the uh, lectionary for the uh, service will come from um, the Book of Common Prayer. You all may have one at your house. I don't, I don't know. If you, I don't have a picture of what I'm, what's, when I, what's show, the camera showing, so I don't know if you're seeing it or not. But anyway. Red book, small red book, thick, thickish, but small. And it's got all the readings in it. And it's got the, all the got the prayers in it and things of that nature. And um, oh, and uh, oh, by the way, it's uh, it's Thursday when I'm talking to you, but you'll be watching this on Sunday. It's kind of chilly. It's kind of chilly inside the church here. So hope y'all all staying warm. It's kind of up and down, isn't it? With the wet. The rain and the dry and the warmer and the colder. But uh, anyway, it won't be long before we start getting into spring and then we'll say, man, I wish it was cooler. All right, uh, we're, this was reading is from, uh, we're going to start off as we do each week with the Colic for the Week and it's uh, in, in, in the uh, prayer book on page 602 if you have that and you want to look it up. And this is the third Sunday of Epiphany. So I'll read this. Remember, this is a prayer. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Okay, and so we'll go to the readings for today from the lectionary and I will as I do each week tell you all four and then uh, I think I'm just going to read from a couple of them this time and then talk from a couple of the uh, readings and uh, but I will tell all of them to you and give obviously you can uh, stop pause the uh, the recording and uh, write and write them down write, you can write them down and pause the recording read them right right now or read them later but anyway let's y'all know what you're going to do so i won't go into that keep going on all about that all right the first reading is from the old testament it's from jeremiah one of the major prophets one of the big ones you know you got isaiah ezekiel and and jeremiah <clears throat> and uh, it's jeremiah 3 19 that's the chapter 3 the big three uh, uh, verses 19 through chapter 4 verse 4 so you read the rest of uh, you read uh, Jeremiah 3 19 through the end of the chapter then you start with the next chapter next chapter chapter 4 and you go through verse 4 okay and then the psalm this week is Psalm 130 it's the whole psalm it's not it's not very long and then our epistle reading or the letter uh, this this week is a letter from from Paul, the Apostle Paul to the Corinthians, the church in Corinth, and it's First Corinthians. You know, there's two. There's First and Second Corinthians. This is First Corinthians, and it's uh, chapter seven. That would be the big seven on the page, verses seventeen through twenty-four. And then our gospel reading this week is is Mark, chapter one. Verses 14 through 20, okay? Now, remember the, uh, 
the Gospels, the first four books of the uh, New Testament, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And uh, this is Mark, uh, who is not one of the uh, 12 disciples, but he traveled extensively with, with several of them. And Mark's the one I always tell you that when he, when he writes, it's like, hold on, because he's going to take off and go. It's no, no messing around on a bunch of words and stuff it just takes off and goes full speed so that's the way it'll be today <clears throat> uh, also just to go back to this you know is I know I keep saying the same things over and over but we got the same things happening over and over we we've got uh, uh, when we get back together in person I think it's one of my goals if I'm still teaching who knows what will be happen, happening but if it's one of my goals that we will um, study uh, the Bible and learn uh, the books of the Bible and, and, and uh, mem memorize as many verses as possible. Uh, like I said, if somebody comes at you so from, the, from the evil one and says, and, and seems to be quoting the scripture but doesn't sound quite right, you can check it with the scripture and find out if it's correct or not. So that's a good, that's a good way. It's called, it's one of the uh, the arm, one of the, when you're talking about putting on the armor of God, that's one of them is the, uh, I think it's the sword, uh, actually, is the, the word, is the word. I don't, maybe wrong. I'm going to look that up and let you know next week. So anyway, so let's go, we'll start off with 1 Corinthians. And I was telling you we're going to learn where the books are. So Corinthians is, um, <clears throat> you've got uh, the four Gospels, and then you got Acts, which is the, written by Luke, as we've talked about before, and it goes, it talks about the early church and, uh, and how it got started and the missionary trips of Paul and of Peter and, of, and some others. And, um, and then after you get through uh, Acts, the first book of uh, the epistles or the letters, it, you know, the first big chunk of them are from Paul because he had most of the books in the Bible were written by Paul. So the first thing you come to is Romans. First book after Acts is Romans. And then the very next book is 1 Corinthians. So I hope you find it. And it's, as I told you earlier, it's 1 Corinthians uh, 1, 10 through 7. No, wait a minute. That's, I'm sorry. I also forgot to tell you, if you have your prayer book at home, we're doing the third Sunday of Epiphany and it's year B. Remember, it's, it's, this is year B. And so it's Mark 1, 14, no, excuse me, I'm confusing myself. It's 1 Corinthians 7, 17 through 24. So it goes 1 Corinthians 7, 17 through 24. And so, I'll read, I'll read it. It's not terribly long. <clears throat> it kind of begins in the middle, but we won't, we won't worry about what went on before. 17. Only let each person lead the life that the Lord has assigned to him and to which God has called him. This is my rule in all churches. Was anyone at the time of his call already circumcised? Let him seek to lead him not let him not seek to remove the marks of circumcision. Was anyone at the time of his call uncircumcised? Let him not seek circumcision. For neither circumcision counts for anything, nor uncircumcision, but keeping the commandments of God. Each one should remain in the condition in which he was called. Were you a bondservant when called? Do not be concerned about it. But if you, gain, if you can gain your freedom, avail yourself of the opportunity. For he who was called in the Lord as a bondservant is a freedman of the Lord. Likewise, he who was free when he was when called is a bondservant of Christ. You were bought with a price. Do not become bondservants of men. So brothers, in whatever condition each was called, there let him remain with God. Okay, so uh, this is Paul telling the... Let me give you a little background on this. One of the big things that was uh, plaguing the uh, early church, one of the things that was really uh, 
causing problems for the early church as it was spread out across uh, outside of uh, Israel was uh, people from Israel, Jews coming in that have become Christians and were trying to tell people, well, you've got to do this, you got to follow this Jewish law or do this Jewish custom. And it was getting the people all messed up because, you know, obviously they, they didn't know anything about it. So it was, so Paul basically, a lot of the time, he's, he spent a lot of his time telling them not to let themselves be concerned when these people come around, that, that, uh, that you need to follow God's commands, not other people's commands. So, uh, so circumcision is, is something that they did, to, that the Jews did to little, the little boys when they were born. And uh, so some of the uh, Jewish Christians were going around to the non-Jewish Christians to tell them they had to be circumcised. And, and Paul's here saying, hey, if you already were circumcised, don't worry about it. Don't try to do it, change it. And if you haven't, don't need to be. Don't worry about that either. So uh, so basically, however you were called, that's, that's the way you should stay. Now, he, he talks in here about uh, being a bondservant, which, you know, Today you would say, uh, and probably a lot of books would say, slave. And uh, back in this time, this is in the Roman, uh, in the Roman Empire, and um, most countries are pretty much the same. But you know, I, I know more about Rome than do the others. But uh, if a person, like say, was captured during a war, like say, the, the Romans went off and conquered, went out and beat another country and took their land from them, they might capture a bunch of the people and they turn them into slaves and they sell them. That's how all the soldiers and some other people make money. So you'd be sold into slavery to these people. And you could, if you had, if you came up with the money, buy your freedom. So that's what he's talking about. Uh, uh, if you can buy your freedom, go ahead and do so. That's what that means. But what he's basically saying, if when you were called as a Christian, you were a bond servant or a slave, you know, don't don't concern yourself. Just be a good one, and uh, basically, uh, you know, you can be a witness for Jesus. No matter what condition you're in, you could be uh, being, being a good worker uh, and doing the right things. Can be a good witness to the your, your the owner the, or uh, the other slave. So, also, but if you were like a a free man, you know, a freed man, already freed, whenever you became a Christian, uh, then you shouldn't. Uh, you shouldn't try to be a big thing and hold it over other people, but just remember that you're you're a bond servant to God and to do whatever He wants you to do. So basically, this is saying uh, whatever condition you're in, stay that way. Uh, whatever you, you were called is when when God called you, you need to stay that way. Now, um, this is going to seem a little bit different from our gospel reading today. Uh, but I think it can be explained with, by the fact that uh, you, uh, by the go, be as you were called. Remember that, as you were called. Uh, and so the part that, that uh, Paul is trying to make here, the final uh, bit that he's really trying to impress on people is, I'll read it straight from here. You were bought with the price. Okay, do you know what, I'll stop there. So you know what that price was? Yes, that was Price that Jesus paid for all of us on the cross to take all our sins away. Do not become bond servants of men. So, brothers, in whatever condition each was called, there let him remain with God. Don't become bond servants of men. Don't let your don't let don't listen to what they say. You know that's different from what you, the gospel that you heard. Don't don't uh, follow uh, you know false prophets that type of thing. Those, short little thing there and basically and I don't know this I'm not a, a theological or Bible expert or whatever but I kind of feel like and there's several times in the in the New Testament where Paul will tell will tell people things like that and I think basically what he's saying is what's important is not your physical position or condition here on earth but your but but what's going to happen eternally and that uh what's most important is if you're set, you need to be help other people get set. In other words, be a witness to other people. And you can be a better witness by, by if you can be a good, better witness by staying where you are and not running away if you're a bond servant or, or 
or whatever, then that's the best thing for God's kingdom because you're only here for a short period of time. You don't need to have luxury here and all that because life is going to be so wonderful once we uh, finally do go to heaven. So we're going to turn over to Mark. Mark 1. See, a lot, this, we're still in chapter 1 on this. A lot happens in Mark really quickly. Mark, let me read it so I get it exactly right. It's Mark 1, 14 through 20. Once again, not terribly long, so I'm going to read it to you. Um, so and when you talk about this being the, uh, the season of Epiphany, uh, that's Jesus revealed as the Savior and beginning his ministry. I uh, bring that up because my Bible has the little subtitles, which weren't written. They weren't in there. This is just... The people who wrote the Bible kind of put these in there to help you know what's breaking up the section over what's coming up. But this one states, Jesus begins his ministry. Okay, here we go. So 14, now after John was arrested, that would be John the Baptist, Jesus called, came into Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. So he is, uh, people, the Jewish people were looking for a Messiah who was going to come in and, and be the king, be sit on the throne and have a, you know, have a kingdom of righteous Jewish people. So the, Jesus is telling them, this is it. This is the kingdom of God is here now. Uh, repent and, and believe in the gospel. So he's basically telling them off the beginning that the kingdom is here and it's a different kingdom than what you thought it was what you thought it was going to be and uh, pay attention because you want to get into this kingdom. Then the next subtitle is Jesus Calls the First Disciples. Now we read, read last week about uh, in uh, let's see which last week we read um, in John uh, the Gospel of John 1 John in uh, chapter 1 about uh, uh, calling disciples, and it's a little different, but uh, there's, it's, not, it's not really a big enough difference to, to, to get concerned about, worry about. But this is the way Mark tells it. He says, Jesus calls the first disciples. Okay, it's chapter 16. Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little further, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. And that's the John who wrote the Gospel of John and also uh, wrote the Revelations. In first, second, and third John as well, of course. Uh, now, let me start over. And going on a little further, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in their boat mending the nets. And immediately he called him, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and followed him. So uh, you can see how, you know, you might. When I said you might get a little concerned, you know, well, that's different. I mean, that, why is this different from what uh, Paul was telling uh, the uh, new Christians in Corinth? You know, to stay where you are. Jesus is telling them to come with him, become fishers. Well, I think what you can see the difference is is that you do what Jesus and what God calls you to do. And you know, if Jesus calls you to be a bond servant, you remain a bond servant. But if he tells you get up and follow him, well, you get up and follow him. And so there's no more uh, emphatic, no more uh, way, you know, sure way of saying that they were uh, all set to follow him when they, when he says, follow me and I'll make you fish, become fishers of men. It says and immediately they left their nets and followed him. They got up and left. They just left their nets in the ocean and sea. Now, I also like the part about where Jesus tells them, I will make you become fishers of men. What does that mean? 
Well, it means that they'll go out and there'll be witnesses and they'll tell people about Jesus. And instead of casting their net and catching fish, they're going to cast their net and catch people and, and turn them and make them Christians so they can become a part of God's kingdom. And then the little, it's even a little bit, the next one's even a little bit more, uh, you know, whatever, stern. But when it says, and going on a little further, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother, and John, his brother, who were in their boat mending their nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their, their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and followed him. So they just got up and left, left their father sitting there. So, um, this is uh, the first four in Mark, the first four disciples that Jesus calls. And then you notice the two sets of brothers. We talked last week about uh, uh, how when uh, Jesus was, before he'd left the, uh, the Jordan area where he was, where John was baptizing, he had called, uh, he'd called Andrew and another disciple, which he did name, to come join him and, and Andrew ran and got, got his brother Simon which became Peter and uh, brought and brought him to Jesus and then the next one was Philip was uh, was uh, called by Jesus he ran and got Nathaniel and uh, that's the one when Jesus says uh, tells Nathaniel I saw you under the fig tree bef uh, before we before uh, Philip called you and so he he, that's when he first time he said you're the son of God so uh, but uh, these these uh, men were fishermen that means they weren't learned they didn't know the Bible in and out they weren't theologians they weren't uh, like the Pharisees who just spent all the time studying the word but uh, these are the people that, that uh, Jesus chose to to uh, spread his word spread the word spread his, start his ministry and so uh, basically it says you don't have to be a priest. You don't have to be a, a, a deacon. You don't have to be a, a theologian. If somebody goes to off to, to Bible school, Bible college, uh, to be a witness, you just have to be available and ready when Jesus calls you, when God calls you. So um, this is um, this is one of the things that you hear a lot about uh, God making. Uh, them fishers of men is I will make you fishers of men. So <clears throat> now, one thing I wanted to point out after we went through these two, something from uh, Corinthians, because you thought that you're going to get by without hearing me say this, but not so much. But. Uh, says that uh, Paul tells them don't uh, okay so with the part where he says uh, for neither circumcision counts for anything nor uncircumcision but keeping the commandments of God so uh, what, what commandments uh, is he talking about Okay, the reason I'm bringing this up because, you know, the, the Jewish people have this big, long list of uh, commandments. They, you, you know of the uh, Ten Commandments. Well, they had a whole bunch of other ones. Some that God gave them to Moses, and they'd sit down, and some they came up, and sometimes instead of commandments, they may say they were traditions, but they became like commandments. And so, it, what it, is, is that what uh, Paul's talking about, them keeping his commandments? No. He's talking about... Uh, because he's talking about the commands of loving God and loving people like we talked about each week. See, he tells you about that. No, not, not so much. It's going to be in there again. But uh, if you remember, Jesus said he didn't come to do away with the commandments, but to fulfill them. So he fulfilled the commandments, and he is the one who said the most important commandments are love God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. And then the second most important command is love your neighbor as yourself. And like I always say, I like to throw in the third, uh, the new one that Jesus gave us, to love one another as he loved us. But just so I'll end with this, remember this. Love God, 
love people, love others, okay? And just remember to do that and you will and you will be good. And how do you love people? Well, obviously, if you know that someone is not saved or not destined to go to heaven, you don't love them if you don't want to tell if you don't want to tell them about Jesus so they can go too. So that's that's what uh, that's what lo true love really is. And uh, Jesus said true love is this that someone will give his life for others and that's what Jesus did for us. He gave his life so that we could live, so we could have life in him and through eternity with his with his father. So if you if you don't know Jesus as your savior, then uh, he he freely died on the cross as a gift of grace for you to be saved, but you have to accept it. You have to take it. So if if you don't if something if that's something you don't understand or if you're not sure about that, then definitely talk with an adult. Talk with um, find me if you see me somewhere. Uh, Miss Jennifer, Mr. Mr. Tom, or uh, Father Andrew, Father Greg, or Deacon, to just ask someone to explain, because that's vitally important that you are sure have surety of that. All right. So uh, once again, thank you for listening. Thank you for coming. If you have any questions, you can try to get them to me. I'm, I keep saying that, even though nobody has done so. I don't know if anybody's tried and not been able to. But uh, if you keep trying, it'll get to me, and I'll do my best to either answer or find someone who can because you know I know some people who know some stuff so uh, just keep trying so anyway we'll end with the prayer and then uh, I, we this Sunday is the third of, Sunday of the epiphany but it's also our annual meeting Sunday at the church so I will be up here and if I if I see y'all here uh, I'll give you an air elbow bump okay and we'll, and we'll, and I'll, we'll say hi to each other okay so let us pray Dear Lord, thank you for this opportunity to come and study your word and to talk about your word. Please open our hearts through your Holy Spirit to receive whatever message you'd have us receive. Please keep us safe. Please help us to be mindful of the needs of others. Please help us to be good witnesses for you and to remember to love you with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and all our strength, and also to love our neighbors as ourselves. Thank you, Father, for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.